So now we are going to discuss about eight Gestalt principles in details. Now I'm going to present these eight principles with a lot of examples so it will be easier for you to understand what they are and what they mean. So these eight principles are proximity, similarity, closure, symmetry, common fate, continuity, good gestalt and figure ground. So let's start with proximity. For example, you can see here that all the dots are having equidistance. So you think that this is actually a single object. But in the right hand side, you can see that these dots are divided into three parts. The first part is the first column and the second column of the dots. And then the second part is the third column and the fourth column of the dots. And the third part is the fifth column and the sixth column of the dot. So what we analyze from this fact that our mind perceives these objects which are closer to each other as forming a group. So basically it may not be a group but we think it as a group because of the proximity or the distance they are in. In summary, the law of proximity states that when an individual perceives an object they perceive objects that are closer to each other forming a group. Now let's move on to law of similarity. Now this law states that if you perceive an object which are similar to each other, then you think that they are actually grouped together. For example, in this diagram you can see that there are black circles and then there are white circles. You can see that there is a horizontal line forming from the black circles and a horizontal line forming from the white circles. You will not see the vertical lines because then you will have the pattern white, black, white, black, which is not similar objects. But you can see all the white circles and the black circles as they are similar, they seem to form a group. So this is law of similarity. Moving on to the next law, which is law of closure. So to understand the law of closure, if you see the image on the right hand side, you can see that there are three circles which seems to form a white triangle. But in reality, there is no white triangle. This is something which we perceive because they are positioned in certain way. So our perception is actually filling the visual gap. And even if you see the triangle which is in the background, which we think as a triangle, is not a triangle at all, it's actually three arc, which are just position like three vertex of the triangle. And we think that the white triangle is actually on top of the background triangle. So we are not able to see the entire triangle. But in reality, we have only three arcs and three circles. In the picture on the left hand side also, you can see that there are no circle and rectangle drawn actually but we perceive that there is a circle and then there is a rectangle. So to summarize law of closure, it says that individual actually perceives object as shape, letter, pictures, etc. as being whole when they are really not. So moving on to law of symmetry. Now what you see here is you are seeing a square bracket in the first, then a curly bracket group and then again a square bracket. So we tend to observe three pairs of symmetrical brackets rather than six individual brackets. It is because we are seeing two brackets as a whole and not as in individual things or entities. So basically the law of symmetry states that the mind perceives object as being symmetrical and forming around a central point. It is uh, perceptually pleasing to divide object into a even number of symmetrical pattern. So that's very interesting fact to know that our mind is actually very happy to divide the objects into even number of symmetrical parts. So now moving on to the law of common fate. Now to understand the law of common fate, I have drawn few circles. Now if I do a little animation here, can you see? few of the circles move to the right hand side. Now what you will think those circles which move to the right hand side are actually a group. 
but in reality it can be or it can be not. So let me do that again. So if I come back to the left and then I go back to the right again. So the law of common fate tells us that if an object or multiple objects are moving in a single line or a single path, then we perceive that they are in a group. Moving on to the next law, law of continuity. Law of continuity tells us that we perceive an object to be made up of continuous object. Any point we see that the continuity is breaking, we don't consider that. So here we see that the cross is made of two slashes instead of a greater than and a less than sign. Moving on to the law of good gestalt. So we see an image which is made up of a rectangle, a triangle and a circle. So basically what we are seeing is three different objects instead of one single object. The law of good gestalt say that elements of an object tend to be perceived or grouped together if they form a pattern that is regular, simple or orderly. So for example, if you are presenting a data and your data is showing a pattern which is actually shown in this image. Now user will actually see the pattern in three different distinct set, the one as a rectangle and the other one as a triangle and the third one as a circle. This gives us a good idea about what the user will think instead of what we want to show them. So moving on to the last law, which is law of past experience. So the law of past experience implies this under certain circumstances, visual stimuli are characterized according to past experience. So in these two images, you can see one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. The elements used are similar but because of their position, if I put these two filled circles outside of my main circle, then you will really not see anything important here. But once I put them inside the bigger circle with this arc, then you will recognize from your past experience that this is forming a smiley. So to sum up, Gestalt's principles are these eight key points. This key principles provides you techniques to be used in your design or data visualization. So you can make your data visualization easily perceivable by your user. They can clearly see what you're trying to convey the message in the first glance or while they are interacting with the data visualization and also to avoid certain mistakes which your user might perceive in a different way than what you want to show them.